What's going on everybody and welcome back to Boo Bros. I'm one of your hosts, Scott, from SoCal Exploring. And I'm Adrian from Lost TV. And in today's video, we're talking all about Halloween Horror Nights 30 in specific. And you know, we'll touch up a little bit on HHN Hollywood because Lost has brought up this great idea for a tasting event. Yeah, a tasting event. You heard us right. A tasting event mixed with an event. But before that, where can they find us on social media, Losh? Oh, all across the board, they can find us at Boo Bros Inc. That's on Instagram and Twitter. And if you want to go on YouTube, you're already here. Might as well hit that subscribe button, you know? And give this video a thumbs up, too, because it helps us with the algorithm. And if you want to subscribe to our individual channels, Lost TV down below in the description and SoCal Exploring down below in the description. But like Lost said, make sure to subscribe to the Boo Bros channel because if you aren't already subscribed with those bell notifications on, then you're missing out on a lot of great haunt content. But let's dive into it. The potential of a Halloween Horror Nights 30 food tasting event during the daytime. So the first thing we're going to be discussing today is daytime haunted experiences. Now these will be like your skeleton bar, maybe even a haunted house being open during the day, stuff like that. What do you think about that, Scott? So the thing is, is, right, is we're not saying that the event will get canceled this year. We're strictly talking about daytime offerings, you know. For example, over at Islands of Adventure this past year, they had the trick-or-treating at the different locations, which was really neat, you know. I mean, I know we're not kids, but still it's fun to do, I would say. I'm all for it. I think that they should have some type of daytime offering to really incorporate the Halloween season because I feel like both Universal Orlando and Universal Hollywood haven't done this. I mean, in 2019, I remember they did it. Uh, it was a limited run in Hollywood where they did something with Hello Kitty, like dressed up as Frankenstein or the Bride of Frankenstein and a couple of other trick or treating things. So I feel like both of the two theme parks in the States are noticing that, hey, maybe we should do some type of daytime event on top of HHN. Speaking of trick or treating, I wonder if they're going to bring that back in specific, because like you said, it caters to the kids. That's not something we've had at the parks in general for Universal. It's something that you can get down the street, down I-4 at Disney. It's always there with Mickey's Not So Scary, but it's never at Orlando for Universal. I wonder, maybe are they gonna bring it back? Are they gonna do something different? I wonder if the Scarecrow Strock will be back because we had the Christmas trail and we had the, well, the Christmas tree trail and we had the crew crawl for Christmas and Mardi Gras respectively. So it makes me think that they're gonna bring it back for Halloween. It's going to be interesting to see if Scarecrow stock returns because I know like over here in Disneyland at the Haunted Mansion Holiday Overlay, everybody looks forward to seeing the different gingerbread house. Like it's it's a different gingerbread house every year. So I feel like this is one of those things that fans can get behind and looking forward to seeing the different scarecrows that they design every single year. Obviously with the first year that did it um, for HHN Light, it was like themed to each specific location, but I'm sure they can get creative with it. Maybe even like the team of, of that specific store can come up with one to make it like more of a, a friendly team member competition. That'd be cool. I don't know, something like that. That'll be pretty dope. I could also see this transitioning well into Hollywood as well. Say if they end up doing an HHN light, like we said in this video that we're going to put in the corner that Scott was talking about HHN light with Rob, I feel like it can work well for Hollywood, being as in spreading everything out, not keeping everything nice and tight, allowing for proper social distancing and allowing everyone to have a good time. Oh yeah, I mean, there's way more offerings that they can do to kind of, you know, bring in more of the general Halloween fan compared to the ones who are just diehard horror fans. There's something for everyone that Hollywood and Orlando could offer. So now getting off the topic of HHN light and things of that nature, let's move forward to a tasting event. So, with the popularity of Mardi Gras this year, it actually ended up getting extended until April, so about two weeks longer than it was supposed to be. This typically isn't something that they'll do with like a food event, like Mardi Gras at Universal at least. So I find it pretty cool and it got me thinking, what if we got a tasting event for Horror Nights? Because there is popular food that is featured during Horror Nights, but it's only featured at the event. What if we ended up getting this food during the day, something like Twisted Taters and Pizza Fries, kind of like we had for Light, but at multiple food booths and also allowing food and drinks that are featured at Horror Nights being during the day. And you know, the crazy thing about that is it's very possible since, you know, especially with Orlando, they have plenty of room to put these different food tasting booths and such like that. 
I mean, they typically what they I've never been to like the actual event in its whole. I've only been to the light version, but they typically have a set place where they have a bunch of food booths, right? Yeah, they have the center console, like how we had the Starcourt Mall. Mm -hmm. It was just where in front of Fallon and in front of the Mummy, there's that Central Park area, and that's where they yeah. had all the food booths. Yeah, so it'll work out perfectly, you know. And with Hollywood, they can also do it in the Universal Plaza area, assuming they don't use the Parisian Courtyard for a maze this year. They can definitely work it to where they have those different food booths and such in the Universal Plaza or in the lower lot. It's a perfect contender for that as well, near Panda Express. I think the tasting event during the day, carrying into the nighttime, a part of Halloween Horror Nights, would work out perfectly. Maybe we can even bring some of Orlando's favorites over to Hollywood. I know some Orlando folks may not like that, but you know, give Hollywood people a chance to taste pizza fries and, and see what they think of them. I think that'd be really neat. And you can also charge like a tasting card on top of the actual HHN ticket. So from a business standpoint, I think that Universal would make a lot of money for this. And from the fan standpoint, they'd have fun because they're getting like this unlimited food off a tasting card and also tasting new food that they never tried before, while at the same time themed to horror. Well, along with the food options, we also have the potential of maybe a house or two being open during the day, kind of like for HHN Light. So let's say they want to pull a different card and not get one of the houses that were open for like last year, like Brides or Tooth Fairy or even Beetlejuice. Maybe they'll do something along the lines of an original house like Puppet Theater since it was the first house that was technically announced. Mm -hmm. Maybe they'll let us see what Puppet Theater is during the day, especially with it being all the way in the back of the park in a sprung tent away from everything. Maybe they'll allow us to do that. That way they can spread out everyone as well keeping that proper social distance. What house do you think can be open? I, I don't have a bet on what house could be open, and I just want to clear this up before anything, guys. These are just our speculations and our, like, you know, what-if scenarios with COVID and everything. Um, but what about a house located in Islands of Adventure? Why not they have a house, a daytime house or two in Islands of Adventure? I, I definitely don't think that anything that we're saying, I don't think it should be written off and been like, that's never going to happen. I do think it's at the bare minimum of like it won't happen but if universal if you're watching right now these are some great ideas just saying a daytime house at islands of adventure and then promoting it to be like go to the full-on halloween horror nights event at universal studios florida night go buy your ticket outside and you know these daytime houses don't need to be on the same level as the ones during the event. It could just be a little bit, a taste of it. A taste of Halloween Horror Nights, you know? <laughs> Which then, the food tasting event could be at Islands of Adventure as well. Give Islands of Adventure some more love during the Halloween season, that's what I say. So to bounce off of your Islands of Adventure, so if they do a soundstage house, they can bring one of the houses out already at Horror Nights, saving them the cost of bringing a house back, mm -hmm. or making a brand new house. The entrance can go straight from Islands to the sound stages because there's a clear walkway from islands to universal oh it'd be perfect yeah so they and it's can not even that far of a walkway it. either really it's not it's literally right there it's literally like walking from beetlejuice to the act like the entrance of beetlejuice to the house yeah so from barney to the sound stage the yeah. <laughs> parade building yeah basically. parade building come on lost i'm not even the hollywood i'm not even the <laughs> orlando fan <laughs> um but yeah I just feel like what Scott's saying there makes a lot of sense too, having the daytime house be in islands, also allowing for crowds to go to both parks. Yep. And you can also spread out the tasting event to both parks as well, have certain exactly. foods that's like exclusive to islands and exclusive food to Universal. And encourage people to go over there, you know? Exactly. Adding a lot of flavor and adding a lot of things that you don't typically see when it comes to Horror Nights because it's all stuck in one park now. Which like but I said... In the universal standpoint, double the revenue. Exactly. It just brings in a ton of money for the company, and I feel like it's a great idea. And that's and why we brought the speculation to, to the table. <laughs> exactly, for future events. No, I, I think, and like I said, credit to Adrian for doing this, like coming up with this idea and everything. I think it's fun that we're kind of speculating on this because there are some great ideas out there. There is a window of plenty of opportunities for both Hollywood and Orlando to build on HHN. Like, they've already been building on HHN for all these years, but they need to build on offering daytime stuff as well and incorporating the whole park into the Halloween season, you know, compared to just putting up a bunch of Horror Night decorations and then them being like, oh, these are for HHN and not for the daytime. But, you know, you can buy a separate ticket for Halloween Horror Nights. 
I really think they need some daytime offerings. I couldn't agree more. That's 100% what we were thinking with this video when we threw it together. It was basically bring horror nights to the day. Bring Halloween, Halloween horror to the days. day. <laughs> Halloween horror days. There you go. <laughs> yeah, exactly. They have to rename it something like because obviously Halloween horror nights just wouldn't fit in, but it's it's there. The potential is there. And with that being said, that's going to do it for today's video. My name is Scott from SoCal Exploring. And I'm Adrian from Lodge TV. We're both we, the Boo Bros. We're part we of have, the Boo Bros. We have been one part of the Boo Bros. <laughs> There's plenty of other Boo Bros. But of course, you guys may know us from Horror Nights and Scripted. And Adrian and I have been collabing for quite some time now. So subscribe fun, with those bell notifications fact, on. Fun fact, this is probably the one year anniversary of it when we recorded is. our first video. Yeah, for so, real, like <laughs> it's it's been a year, it's crazy. and I'm I'm happy that we still are friends and we're a part of this Boo Bros channel. But like I said, subscribe, smash that subscribe button, smash it, you know, like all the cool ding, YouTubers ding, ding, ding. say, you know, and uh, follow us on social media, all that fun stuff. But I just want to say, what are we gonna say, Adrian, to close off the video? Um, uh, remember to keep. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, stay spooky, everybody. <laughs> stay spooky, everybody. Peace out. <laughs>